What's up guys? In today's video, we're gonna take the Chevy Silverado EV RST with 205 kilowatt hour battery on a range test. We're gonna test it out with a 7,700 pound trailer. We're gonna gain about 5,500 feet and go uh, 80 miles from Paulsville, Washington to uh, Hurricane Ridge, also Washington, and then back again. So a total round trip of 160. Check it out. I have a weight safe um, hitch on here. We're, we're charged to about 99%. Uh, shows 98 right now. Hopefully it'll be 99 by the time I re uh, leave. But really we're just looking at the efficiency. I've taken all the weights out that I don't need for this trip. So that's hanging out right here. And it's just gonna be me and my dog and this 77,000 or 7,700 pound trailer. So we're gonna back up on it. Let's uh, switch to hitch mode. Let's get a little off. I have rear steering right now engaged because I have not set up uh, for towing yet. So uh, it looks pretty good right there. Let's go outside and check it out. All right. Okay, that might. Might go on by just lowering it. Let's see. Maybe we'll just take that out. Put it in here. So we're going to set up the trailer. We're going to go to drive mode. We have it put in tow. From here, you can go ahead and click on uh, the trailer. You can see I have it set up to the utility trailer, which is not correct. So now we'll add a new trailer. Let's see. Um, utility. Switch profile, let's see if that, yeah, here we go. Add new trailer. And we'll call this camper. It is a travel trailer. Trailer, okay, here we got trailer features and settings. Trailer side blind spot alerts, improves your side, okay. Trailer tire monitor, let's see, let's click on each one. Enter trailer measurements. The trailer is 97 inches wide. Now, overall length, let me measure that. The length was 378 inches. All right, done with that one. Trailer tire monitor. We're not gonna do that right now, but the, the truck comes with four sensors. They're really nice. Uh, you It will tell you how to do it, but basically you just let some air out of the tires and it will register. Let's do trailer maintenance. It will tell us uh, how often to check certain things. Let's see here, set default trailer, no. Gross weight, I'm gonna have alert, sure. And let's see here, tow haul reminder, anti-theft, we'll skip that. And I think we are good on that one. We can uh, set the gain. It'll walk you through how to do that. Basically, you drive forward, you activate manual gain controller, and just see if it will skid or not, and then set it right below the skid. Of course, the less gain you have, the more... A re regen you get all right i think we are all set up let's go for a road trip so let's go ahead and we'll start it from here at the high school in palsbo we'll go vehicle trip we're at 98 percent right now trip two we'll reset that one and we'll see what kind of efficiency we get we're going to start with a little bit of uh, elevation loss So we'll uh, we'll gain some efficiency there, but we'll have a long enough trip for it all to average out. Here we go. We got the cruise control set. We're finally on a major road. What are you doing, buddy? Hopefully he'll stay. Yeah, and uh, cruise control is taking care of it. 
I decreased the gain for the parking brake or for the assistant brake to one from 10. 10 does not skid the tires, but I was thinking that as I hit downhill later on, I'd like to get as much regen as possible. I'll see how the handling is. If I need to, I could always just reach down here and brake on my own. So um, that is the plan for right now. So here we are. We are cruising with um, cruise control on, hands free. As long as you pay attention, it won't bother you to uh, touch the steering wheel or anything. It's completely up to you. And one thing it will not do is change lanes for you. But um, other than that, you're good to go, even while towing. All right, boys and girls, we have now driven the first 60 miles of the trip. It's been mostly flat, and we are looking at 0 0.9 miles per kilowatt hours while towing 7,700 pound trailer. So that is pretty good. If you're driving across the middle of the US, then that's the number you're looking at. As you can see on the map here, let me zoom out, I'm about to start heading up to Hurricane Ridge. So numbers are gonna go way down as I go up and obviously go way up as I come back down again. Look at that view, guys. We are heading up the mountain. That is Hurricane Ridge up there. So before the major hill climb, we are looking at 0 0.9 miles per kilowatt hour. That's gonna drop quite a bit as we're heading up that enormous mountain. Speed limit heading up the hill here is 45, so I'm sticking to that. And I, in the steepest hills here, I'm doing about 150 kilowatts of energy to uh, keep it going. Shallower, it's about 80. So here we are. Have not gotten to the visitor center yet, or the uh, gates. I mean, the visitor center actually burnt down a while back. But we are approaching the gate to the park. We are officially in the park, and according to the ranger at the station, there is quite a bit of snow on the top, and the parking lot has not been uh, cleared out. So he recommended as soon as we get to the top to turn around, as they will be very hard to turn around elsewhere. So that is what we are going to do. Quite a few rocks falling down here. Hopefully all the loose ones have fallen already. It's a little nerve-wracking when you see massive boulders next to the road. We have reached snowy regions. It's, uh, yeah, no problem driving here. Handling is amazing. Can't really feel the, the weight back there, but um, since I don't know how tippy these trailers are, I'm just taking it nice and slow into turns and then just accelerating out which as you can see here, it's not great for the efficiency. I'm sure if I was going at one steady speed, even if it was much faster than where I'm going, I'll be using uh, less power. We got to the top, no issues at all. It pulled it really, really well. And um, yeah, the, no overheating issues or anything like that. And when he came up, look at this view. So this is Hurricane Ridge. If you're ever in Washington State, this is a cool place to check out. to head back down again so you can see I got 77 miles of range based on the current consumption 45% battery so I would not make it home if I hadn't just head up the mountain uh, vehicle status we're gonna go to the trip you can see that was the first trip 80.5 miles 0.7 we're gonna go ahead and reset that one and uh, see what we got on the way down let's go Initially here on the way down, I'm going to have the gain set to only uh, one 
and uh, to maximize how much energy we will get from um, regening. And if at any point that gets sketchy, then we'll uh, make it a little higher. So even though I'm at 45% right now, the car is smart enough to figure out that I'll be at 36% when I get home uh, because of the gains I'll get heading downhill here. So that'll be interesting to see how close it gets to it. Hopefully it'll be real close to 36% so you can trust that on your trip in the future. I got to the bottom, I have gained 9% uh, battery power. So that's what, like 18 kilowatt hours? It's gone really well, no issues at all with the uh, gain set to just one. I have so much weight up here in the front that um, yeah, I didn't get pushed around at all. The estimate was not as accurate as I was hoping. Uh, if you might remember on top of the Hurricane Ridge, there was in about 36% when I got back home. It is now showing 27, so that's 9% different. That is quite a bit. So anyway, I don't know if it would get more accurate over time, but um, as it is right now, and it's only had the trailer on there for about 150 miles, it was 9% off on the return. That's it for the road trip. Here are the numbers. So on flat land, I got 0 0.9 miles per kilowatt hour, which gives me about 185 miles of range towing this trailer right here. Going up the hill, it was 0 0.7, so a little bit less. And then, um, well, that was the average from home all the way to the top of Hurricane Ridge, 0 0.7. And then coming back, somehow it jumped up to 1.8. Obviously, I get a lot of extra power charging going down, but still just seems strange because 1.8 and the uh, 0.9, you're looking at a average that's higher than what it would be just going on flatland. So I'm not exactly sure how to interpret that, but anyway, I would go with a 0 0.9 if you were to uh, drag one of these around, 7,700 pounds on flatland. If you have any questions at all, if you have uh, anything you would like for me to test with a, a Silverado EV RST, then please let me know. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Yeah.